The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. William Barrett Travis and James Butler Bonham were two South Carolinians who fought at the Alamo in the War for Texas Independence. Historically, William Barrett Travis becomes the commander of the garrison at the Alamo, and there's a lot of controversy about how did that happen and a lot of misunderstandings about who he was that put him in that position. But historically, we know that he's the commander. Bonham, on the other hand, is a figure that comes in and out of the Alamo, but he's, he's still important. And what he represents is this idea of, even though they know that death is a real possibility, that he's willing to come back and bring information. Travis and Bonham were natives of Saluda County. James Butler Bonham went to the University of South Carolina, which was new, and it was called South Carolina College at that time. And the food must have been terrible because they had a food strike, a food riot almost, and many of the really good students were expelled. And he was one of them, James Butler Bonham was. Travis went on to Alabama, and he went to school there. After Bonham was expelled, and he went to Pendleton and he read law there and uh, became a practicing lawyer there. And he left there to go to Alabama. Bonham and Travis became interested in the cause of Texas settlers who were being oppressed by Santa Ana's Mexican regime. One of the things about people in the 1830s is that they were on the move and they were on the move looking for opportunity. They were on the move because they were looking for opportunities, not just for themselves, but also opportunities to spread this new ideology they had of uh, republicanism, small r republicanism. And so both Travis and Bonham represent really a, a generation that's born after the American Revolution, but they feel obligated to uh, carry on what was started in 1776. Death wasn't something that scared them. Travis came to Texas because he'd had financial difficulties in Alabama, and he's really looking to remake himself. And his one skill, among many of his skills, he's, he's a lawyer. And so he, he begins to take cases, he begins to come into contact with people like Stephen F. Austin, really the, the elite of the Texas colonists. And in 1832, same time in South Carolina, the nullification crisis, Travis is, is bringing on his own crisis here in Texas by getting himself arrested, getting the colonists all upset to then attack and drive out a Mexican garrison there at the town of Anahuac. So very early on, you know, four years before the Alamo, Travis is, he's a radical, he's a rebel. Travis had become a military officer and in 1835 was ordered to recruit reinforcements for the Alamo, a strategic fortress in Bayar to defend against the Mexican army. Bonham also came to Texas with a company of militia cavalry. Bonham was in this mix. He was a young man that was well-connected, uh, was in the militia, and so he was a nullifier. He suppo supported nullification, the idea that states' rights trumped federal rights. And this is an idea that he brings with him to Texas. And so when you look at what is happening in Texas, Bonham says, you know, I'm here to volunteer, use me however you'd like. But he isn't here to restore Texas to the federal Mexican Republic. He's here for independence and for the opportunity for Texas to be a new republic. But the way that he and Travis and others view what a republic should be. Bonham arrived at the Alamo in January 1836. 
Travis was named official commander of the Alamo February 12th, facing insurmountable odds against a formidable opponent. Commandancy of the Alamo, Bear, February 24th, 1836. To the people of Texas and all Americans in the world, fellow citizens and compatriots, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the Mexicans under Santa Ana. I have sustained a continual bombardment and cannonade for 24 hours and have not lost a man. The enemy has demanded a surrender at discretion. Otherwise, the garrison are to be put to the sword if the fort is taken. I have answered the demand with a cannon shot, and our flag still waves proudly from the walls. I shall never surrender or retreat. Then I call on you, in the name of liberty, patriotism, and everything dear to the American character, to come to our aid with all dispatch. The enemy is receiving reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or four thousand in four or five days. If this call is neglected, I am determined to sustain myself as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due to his own honor and that of his country. Victory or death. William Barrett Travis, Lieutenant Colonel, Commandant. Along with James Bowie and Davy Crockett, William Travis and James Bonham were heroes of the Alamo who fought and died for the cause of freedom. Both of them, those two men, uh, wanted freedom and I think that that is evident in what um, Travis said and the fact that Bonham went out for help trying desperately to get help and wasn't able but came back to give his life, to give his life as a kind of symbol a symbol for men everywhere to live by their beliefs, not give in to them. Believe in your country, believe in uh, what's right, and to them that was right. It was right for them to do that. I think one of the fallacies that we have about history is that, that we can compartmentalize history and say, well, you know, this is U.S. history, this is Mexican history, this is Texas history, you know, this is South Carolina history. But it's all connected. And so even though you're growing up in South Carolina and the Alamo may be, you know, several states away, it's still connected to your, who you are, who these people were. What made South Carolina really a powerhouse in the early republic is the type of things that spawns people like William Bear Travis and, and Bonham. It really is a seedbed for these young, aggressive Republican radicals who want to go out and change the world. And so this is part of, part of South Carolina's legacy. <laughs>